Hi, it's Travis Oscar Mike Radio number 159. Oscar Mike Radio is part of the Hubazoo Network. You can find out more on hubazoo.com. And again, um, if you're watching this video, this video is on Facebook Live and YouTube. But don't worry if you're a true diehard podcaster. It is also on SoundCloud. And I want to start off tonight by dedicating this podcast to the memory of Staff Sergeant Arturo Benavides, U.S. Army. Uh, he was a Hawk missile operator and was killed in the tragic uh, El Paso shooting last week. And many people died, but the reason I kind of wanted to dedicate this podcast to him specifically and the other victims is there are not a lot of hawkers left. It was a very uh, defined MOS, both in the Army and the Marine Corps. There are not a lot of us, and every time one of us passes, uh, a little bit of history dies. So I just wanted to mark his passing and say that you have my utmost condolences for the family and people affected by the El Paso shooting and whatever comfort you can get from this podcast, uh, I freely extend it. And hawkers never die. That's the truth. And I hope to meet Mr. Benavides someday at Heaven's Pearly Gates on the launcher. Oscar Mike Radio is sponsored by Joyce Asac of Asac Realty. And um, we appreciate everything she does for Oscar Mike Radio. So I'm reading uh, some news over the weekend. And there's this base in Russia. If you look there and if you um, look at the picture I have up, and click on the link I'm going to have in the Oscar Mike Radio blog post, there is a huge explosion. That is far away. So if you look at the um, way that is, that is a big, big fireball. And I started reading the story about this and kind of wanted to... Uh, rap about this because uh, I'm on military.com. This is where I got the article from for this podcast. But the last paragraph really kind of, I don't know, encapsulates what I'm going to try to talk about. Officials Im didn't immediately announce the cause of fire. The latest in a series of blazes at Russian military arsenals over the past few years. Okay. That seems to suggest that the fires like the one you're seeing are kind of a common thing. Like you're, you're walking down the street and you're going to the grocery store or to the park or to the soccer field, or what have you, riding your motorcycle, your Earl, your, your Russian motorcycle that's a BMW derivative, and there's a Big old fireball blazing in the military base is no big deal. And it kind of got me wondering um, because Americans can't even deal with loud planes or, you know, 105 howitzers going off in the morning, depending upon where they are, or, you know, people running in formation at zero dark 30. I could go on and on and on about the things that American civilians and people who live in towns complain about. I, I really can't imagine what it's like living in an area, right, where you get up and you're driving down the road and you hear this big explosion and a huge fire goes off. And reading the military.com site, um, this explosion at this military depot in Siberia injured 12, 
one's gone, one's missing. So, uh, okay, that's, that's, you know, news speak for blown up and forced more than 16,000 people to evacuate their homes. It was an ammunition depot near the city of Ashness in Siberia's uh, Krasnoyarsk region. And the massive blast continued, continued for 16 hours. So it wasn't even like a, a big boom, right? It wasn't like a big boom and we were done. Well, these were several booms over the course of 16 hours. So someone's day was messed up. And again, and again, I'm going to have to really like nerd out about this and get real specific because I can't remember ever where this kind of thing happened in the U S now, certainly, and I've talked about it on this podcast before, um, um, Americans aren't exactly exempt from questionable activities, ships running into other ships, uh, planes crashing into ski gondolas, any number of things, right? But this is, I mean, how do you let fire near an ammunition dump? Was somebody smoking? Was it a cigarette, a match, you know, unsecured ammunition? How does that happen? And how big was this ammunition dump? It must have been big. Because again, look at, look at this image here I have on the screen. I kind of have the, have the cursor kind of pointing to it. And that is a huge fireball. That is not close to these people who are standing on the screen. That is a long way away. Which means the people on base had no choice really but to back up and let this thing blow itself out, literally. And, and for the th the 13th person that is missing here, right, I mean, talk about going out in a blaze of, of unglory. What an undignified way to go. And so I just wondered, you know, has this happened before? Has, has this kind of thing gone on in the U.S. or other places? And it doesn't seem like it. But then, and I'll have this article linked in the Oscar Mike Radio blog post. You read down here that with evacuation and air traffic and all this other stuff. But the last paragraph is key. Officials didn't immediately announce the cause of fire, the latest in a series of blazes at Russian military arsenals over the last few years. So with, does that suggest that there have been fires at different other military arsenals and it's just commonplace now? Is, is that what that's suggesting? I, I don't know. But that's some serious stuff, man. I mean, that is some serious stuff. Look at that fireball in the picture. Look at that. That is not a small fireball. I mean, I don't have a sextant out here. I can't compute, you know, from where they're standing to the top of the fireball to, to figure out how tall it is or what the distance to that fireball is. But that is a big ball of fire. I mean, some serious ammunition was cooked off that day. Over 16 hours? I mean, you're, you're, I mean as, as, as terrible as it is that one person is probably passed on with this, it's very fortunate that more people weren't hurt. I mean, how does that happen? How does that happen? I don't know. Whose head's going to roll um, over this one? And this is not the first base it's happened at. It's not the only time it's happened. And I know it's, um, sometimes you want to think that the other militaries in the world are just as awesome as we are, but you look at this and you got to figure, well, you know, for all the U S military's faults and flaws and, you know, weird customs and traditions, I think we get this one, right? I don't believe we've had like an entire ammo, ammo depot blow up over 16 hours. You know, I, I, I lived in, uh, you know, near an, uh, a big air force base 
with a lot of bombs, you know, served on several military bases and never had to worry about uh, the ammo depots getting uh, cooked off. And where I was, you know, stationed was extremely hot. Siberia's not known for its warmth, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I, I, I don't understand this. I don't understand how this happened. And <laughs> the last sentence keeps coming to my mind. It's not, I mean, this is a series of several blazes that have happened at Russian military bases. And you got to wonder if, if they can't keep their ammunition under control, how can they field, you know, aircraft carriers and aircraft and other things that, you know, really do need diligent attention. So it's just, um, it's just interesting. It's just a weird, weird story. And there's not a lot coming out of it, of course, uh, because it is Russia you're talking about here. They're not going to really release a lot of information. This didn't affect anybody outside the um, country of Russia. So again, I don't think you're going to see a lot more come out of this. I certainly would like to know. This is this is not like the Kursk when the Kursk went down in um, the ocean and um, the United States and Britain tried to help recover the men off that submarine and Russia shut them down. And we had a lot more insight to what was going on with that situation. I, I doubt very seriously that you know, we're going to find out anything for a while, if ever. They're just closed mouth, closed lipped, tight lipped about this kind of stuff. But still, it's interesting. And again, I, I want you to look at that picture. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast, you can go to OscarMikeRio.com and find this podcast number 159. And I'll have the picture in the blog post and you'll see. And, you know, you don't have to know geometry or navigation to figure out that that is from that vantage point a long way away, a very big ball of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. All kidding aside, I mean, that is a, it, that is a large explosion, large explosion over a sustained period of time. So I'd be curious to know what you think about this. Uh, you can, you know, find out more, uh, Oscar Mike radio on Facebook, Oscar Mike radio on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any ideas about this, I'd be welcome to hear them. Speaking of ideas, I kind of want to take the rest of the time we have and kind of talk about ideas. i um, interested in talking to people who are going to be working with or serving veterans in the holiday period. Yes, I know it's August and, you know, it's still summer. It's still very hot in a lot of places in the United States and the world, but I know a lot of people who serve veterans are preparing now to, um, you know, gear up and spool up to make their holidays, their Thanksgiving and Christmas brighter. So if you know somebody who is working to support veterans, if you know somebody who actively is starting their, their uh, 2019 holiday campaign now, I'd be interested in talking with them. Uh, these are the kind of people that really interest me who are taking what they have and working to make someone's life better. And that's what the podcast is all about. And I don't know if I'm going to call this a podcast anymore. I'm going to kind of close down with this, that if this video thing, if people like it and it works, and I get better at it. Um, I'll, I'll keep doing it. But the main thing is, is I want to get to a point where, you know, if, if you are involved with veterans advocacy and you want to, um, advocate for veterans, you can reach out to me. We can, you know, bring you on the podcast and I can, you know, help you have a good experience and talk about what you do. I'm very, very interested to hear from you. One of the reasons I'm doing the, the podcast this way, and technically this isn't a podcast when I'm, I'm recording myself, you could kind of call it a, a, a vlog for lack of a better term. But again, for those people who are diehard podcast enthusiasts and listeners, you can still enjoy the podcast the same way as you always have. But for those who like video, want video, and for some reason want to see my face, well, you can see my face um, for what it's worth on Facebook Live and YouTube.
The other thing I want to talk about is um, I'm very curious to talk to a parent or two who has a child going into the military. A lot of reasons for that, but as I um, see uh, children that, that I kind of grew up with, what I see, mean by that is they, they were, they were, they were babies and then they're now 18, 19, 20 years old and they're keen to join the military. Their, their methods, their reasoning, their, their desire to go and serve is, is similar to mine, but seeing it from the parent's side, it's, it's a very different feeling. And I kind of want to understand how parents felt, how the kids felt. Well, I can't really call them kids. I really feel that if you can make the decision to serve your country and sign the dotted line, you're taking a very adult step with your life. But I'd be interested in talking to you. I'd be interested in hearing what you have to say and what your story is. And maybe um, I can kind of adopt you as you go through your military career. It'd be kind of cool to check in with you from time to time. And I'd really appreciate getting to uh, support you and see you succeed in, in the military. And if it's not your life ambition, in life in general. I really believe there's a saying that you shouldn't let your military define your entire life, but it's certainly defining time in your life. And you can take what you have learned in the military and apply it to several areas of your life outside the military. So again, um, like I told people a couple podcasts ago, you're going to see more of this kind of live content. So all I'm doing is recording this to um, my computer. I'll throw it in the editor, do some editing, get better at that, strip out the sound file and put that into the, the, um, the SoundCloud where you can you know hear the podcast and put them both up on all the places on Thursday. So again, uh, just I wanted to... Um, this right oh, there we go uh, i wanted to you know kind of dedicate this podcast to the to the memory and service of staff sergeant arturo benavides and all the people who were were killed and injured in the el paso shooting sad time for our country regardless of how you, you believe on the human level it's a sad sad time there's there's a lot of problems there and i just wanted to to mark you know, their passing and his in particular because he's a hawker and there's simply not many of us left. And, and then, you know, you get up and go to work in the morning. I, I don't think a lot of us have to worry about working in an environment where we can literally be blown up. And we'll never find out what happened here in Russia, but there, there's a lot of problems there. And again, if you are... Um, getting ready to start your winter campaign for holiday support for veterans. I want to talk to you. You can email me, Travis Oscar Mike Radio. And if you have a, a child in the delayed entry program looking to join the military and you know, you'd like to talk about your story and what you think about this as a parent or as the, the child themselves, I certainly would like to talk to you and understand where you're coming from. So I'll work on getting better at this, uh, kind of getting in the groove. I want to thank you for your time. I'm Travis. This is Oscar Mike Radio. Thanks to uh, my Hoobazoo team. Thank you to my sponsor. And I'll see you next week.